Please excuse a short advertisement before I proceed. I am offering an audio course in conservation biology. Details are at the link in the description immediately beneath this video. On to the story then, which was inspired by my friend Paul, house sitter, pet sitter, and thoughtful wanderer. You can follow Paul's adventures at his blog, The Thoughtful Wanderer. The URL is wherespaulnow.blogspot.com, and it too can be found in the description immediately beneath this video. Imagine you're listening to the radio as you gaze at the horizon out your fourth floor window. You see a mushroom cloud and immediately recognize it as a detonation from a nuclear bomb. As if that's not bad enough, you see a 20-foot I-beam spinning toward you, no doubt triggered by the atomic blast. The I-beam will strike you dead in three seconds. There is no way to escape. Lacking time to respond, you wait, frozen. One, two. Good news! Fortunately, you miscalculated the path of the I-beam. It sails overhead, narrowly missing you and also the roof above your head. The good news doesn't last long. The voice on the radio playing in the background announces the bomb blast will level everything in the city in three minutes. Compared to three seconds, three minutes seems like an eternity. What shall you do with the time? Make a telephone call, if the system still works? Write a quick note to someone you love? Make peace with your god, if you have one? Switching timelines now, as if the bomb occurred only in a nightmare, imagine a routine trip to the medical doctor. After a thorough physical examination, the doctor matter-of-factly informs you that you have only a few minutes to live. Three minutes, he yeses. He leaves you alone with your thoughts. You ponder your life and wonder how to proceed. You have the same thoughts as you did with the bomb. You take a few deep breaths. The doctor re-enters the examination room after nearly three minutes. He apologizes for his error and says you have about three hours to live, not three minutes. You breathe a sigh of relief. Three hours seems like a long time compared to three minutes. You can make a few calls, pen a quick will, and record a few thoughts for posterity on paper. You've been granted the trifecta of life-finishing tasks after you thought you'd only get a few more breaths. You can rinse and repeat for a diagnosis of three days versus three hours, and then for three weeks instead of three days. Three weeks? It's nearly an eternity compared to a few days. Three weeks doesn't seem long until it's compared to a few days. Ditto for three months relative to three weeks, and also three years relative to three months. Three years, after all, is a short-term terminal diagnosis. Most people would be very upset to learn they have such a short future. Do we have three years with habitat for human animals on Earth? Considering the many means by which we are driving ourselves to extinction, most notably including the near-term loss of ice floating on the Arctic Ocean, and also the collapse of industrial civilization due to passing the world peak of conventional oil more than 17 years ago, I will be pleasantly surprised if I am able to continue this work for another three years. After all, habitat for humans on Earth will disappear shortly after the Arctic sea ice is gone. Habitat for human animals also will disappear shortly after aerosol masking is diminished due to a reduction in industrial activity. We are living within the ultimate catch-22. Three years isn't a long time, unless viewed with the proper perspective. Three decades, on the other hand, is a pipe dream to be experienced by zero humans on Earth. Although three years is a stunningly short span of time, it doesn't seem at all short relative to three months. Ditto for the pairwise comparisons of months to weeks to days to hours to minutes to seconds. Thus do the seven threes, from a few seconds to a few years, provide a powerful reminder to live in the present moment. Even if we have another decade, and we don't, then we don't have long. The best case scenario gives us a few years before our clock runs out. My response? Pressum diem. May we all find the means and the fortitude to squeeze the life out of every moment. I'm reminded of one of my college roommates while I was earning my bachelor's degree in forest science at the University of Idaho. I think I received my first lessons in modern stoicism from Dave, who was about 10 years older than me, and also considerably wiser. A standard greeting for me was, how you doing? Sometimes I'd ask, how's life? Dave always responded with the same line, it don't do no good to bitch. Good advice for then and now. Our time is short regardless of the lies told by paid climate scientists, government officials, and media personalities. 
Even in the absence of abrupt, irreversible climate change, our time is short. As Homer pointed out in the Iliad nearly 2,800 years ago, any moment might be our last. That sentiment applies to all of us. And yet, in light of your individual death and our ultimate demise, it don't do no good to bitch. Instead, I suggest the same thing you've heard me say already. I recommend living where you feel most, most alive, and simultaneously, where you feel most useful. I recommend living fully. I recommend living with intention. I recommend living urgently, with death in mind. I recommend the pursuit of excellence. I recommend the pursuit of love. In light of the short time remaining in your life, and my own, I recommend all of the above, louder than before, more fully than you can possibly imagine, to the limits of this restrictive culture, and beyond. For you, for me, for us, for here, for now. Live large, be you, and bolder than you've ever been. Live as though you're dying, the day draws near. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly though, thanks for watching.